Itasca County in Minnesota's nature, home to a thousand lakes and 45,000 citizens, is now more than ever a hub of rural life and trade for the region. One only needs to spend a day here to recognize that the area is anchored by the spirit of community, philanthropy, and the sense that anybody can make a difference. Both the county and its seat, Grand Rapids, were organized 125 years ago in 1891. It was evident even back then that the people were forward-thinking and community-minded. This atmosphere would attract a unique relationship between Grand Rapids and one gentleman in particular. In 1886, in small town Wisconsin, a 14-year-old named Charles Kenneth Blandon left home with his father's blessings and a few possessions and headed out into the world to pursue his interests, eventually making his way to the Twin Cities to work for a large publication. In 1916, the St. Paul Pioneer Press and Dispatch purchased the local Grand Rapids paper mill. Its business manager was one Charles K. Blandon. The owner of the Pioneer Press died, and his widow offered to sell the operation to Blandon for a modest sum. Blandon assumed ownership, and in 1929, the Itasca Paper Company was renamed the Blandon Paper Company. After his wife passed in 1940, Blandon spent even more time in Grand Rapids, deepening his relationship with the community. His commitment to the economy and well-being of the region went well beyond the paper mill and his own lifetime. In January of 1941, he formed the Blandon Foundation. There came a request of a city councilman for a municipal beach. This proved a perfect initiative for the foundation to invest in for their first grant. Blandon Beach opened to a crowd of 3,000 on Forest Lake with a public celebration on June 27, 1948. Charles Blandon, presenting the bathhouse key to the mayor, remarked on the changes occurring in the village over the past 60 years, noting that the youth of coming generations in Grand Rapids will have broader opportunities for education, for cultural developments, and for better things of life than they have had in the past. The Charles K. Blandon Foundation will endeavor to live up to its obligations to assist in the fulfillment of this idea. Over the past 75 years, the Foundation has been a steward of the vision and leadership of Charles Blandon, awarding more than 7,000 grants and 15,000 scholarships, and continuing to award $12 million each year, including hundreds of scholarships for local students. Even beyond financial support, the Foundation has trained more than 7,000 residents of rural Minnesota in community leadership over the past 30 years, and has engaged communities on issues from gun violence to broadband to forest productivity. Charles Blandon's vision to improve the life of his adoptive hometown continues to inspire, as now, more than ever, everyday citizens are finding ways to make a difference in their own way, to create their own legacies, and to demonstrate community leadership. My name is Myrna Peterson. In 1995, I was in an auto accident in June. And 16 hours later than that, my good friend and neighbor, Lee, was in an accident as well. The two of us became wheelchair bound at that time. My name is uh, Lee Isaacs. Um, I am 57 years old. I'm a long, uh, lifelong resident of Deer River. Riding motocross bike was my exercise, plus a thrill, because it was a total body workout. I had built my own practice track in my pasture. I was racing around the track, and um, I took a jump. I had jumped 100 times. I made, I thought it was safe. And I, my front tire caught on the jump, and I leaned back, thought I could hang on to it. It flipped me over. Then my life changed drastically. And all of a sudden, two very active people in the community were in wheelchair bound, uh, physically, emotionally, spiritually um, different than we were. We both had similar priorities as far as what we wanted to do and limitations as to what we could do. 
We talked about how we could work together to make a difference. It all started actually when, when my son and his friend Freya, which is Myrna's daughter, they were going to do this benefit for Myrna. I said, yeah, I'm on board, I'll help. Well, then Myrna found out about it, and well, then she has said, it's got to be both of us. Together, cooperatively, they came up with Myrna Lee Mania, and the task was going to be raise funds to help me get the technology to put in my van so I could drive and help Lee get a vehicle. And we decided we'd try to break a Guinness Book of World Records to see how many wheelchairs we could get in one place, moving simultaneously for as long as it took. Let's make this wheelchair event a big awareness event. Now we can show all the people in Itasca County just how many people are in wheelchairs that we don't see. And then we heard that New Zealand had 246 wheelchairs for two minutes. Well, that upped the ante. Then I said 300 for three minutes. And it was a joke. Everybody said, we'll never get it. Well, come May 16th, Lee started out. He was number one and I was number two. And we led 351 wheelchairs for three minutes. It was surreal. It was a dream that everybody said wouldn't happen, and we proved it. It was a huge awareness piece for the community that, that a bunch of us worked together to make happen. People in wheelchairs in northern Minnesota really have a hard life, and um, we don't have the accessibility that they have down in the Twin Cities in a major city. So we want to make Itasca County be wheelchair friendly and accessible, and to make our county be a leader for other counties in the state. To pull off this event today and make it as awesome as it was, it truly took a community. And when they say it takes a village, it takes a village. The city of Grand Rapids has bent over backwards for us. Um, the Itasca County, the leadership, uh, just have supported us from the very beginning. All the businesses have opened up their um, wallets, basically, and provided donations for us. People, any place we needed help, not one single person turned me down when I was out asking for help, no matter what that was, whether it was um, to come and work today, or make a donation, or to put something in the paper. Everybody we talked to wants to help and love this mission, and that's why it was so successful. The movement that Myrna and Lee's children initiated is growing into Mobility Mania, a nonprofit initiative to annually raise funds to provide improvements to accessibility around Itasca County. Five years earlier, another effort was starting out. One of our community's fundraising events, the Bash, began as a benefit for a young woman facing cancer. It started with a dear friend of ours, um, Jackie, passed away in 2010. And we decided as a group to put together a benefit for her. After 5,000 people attended the first event to support Jackie Bischoff, her 30 friends who organized the event decided they wanted to start something for the wider community. From there, we got in touch with the Grand Rapids Area Community Foundation and talked about starting what is now the Itasca Area Cancer Crisis Fund. Since its inception, the funds raised by the community for the Itasca Area Cancer Crisis Fund have supported over 200 individual grants, totaling more than $183,000 to help local cancer patients and their families. I think our community is um, truly unique in that they, they're they very supportive and very, um, very generous, both with their time and with money. Year after year, we are more and more surprised on how generous the businesses and the people are. And the volunteers that we have each year, it's just amazing that we have some of the same people come back year after year to volunteer and they too just really believe in what we're doing and are so appreciative. And some of the people that volunteer are even recipients of the grants themselves. We're just there to kind of organize and, you know, get it going in the right direction. So it truly is an entire community that makes that event be as successful as it is.
the leadership spirit in Itasca County is contagious as individuals and organizations collaborate to use their passion and energy to directly improve the life of the community. You know, it's interesting. Grand Rapids has always, for many years, uh, the arts have been integral to the community. Businessmen and business people in the community actually took place uh, and, and participated in the arts in, in Showboat, in the Grand Rapids Players. Uh, we today have the privilege of, of reaping the benefits of all that collective artistic experience. Grand Rapids, Minnesota, the scale of the community is really quite wonderful. It's the scale of a community where an individual, a person, can say, I want to make a difference. I want to do X. And it's possible. In Grand Rapids, people say, you know what we need to do? We need to have a first Friday art walk. Let's do it. And suddenly, it's there. It's happening. And then, out of that, grew the artist residency program on the top floor of the schoolhouse. That's this collection of artists meeting at the table on a monthly basis uh, were able to realize so many things. And this is, this is just an astonishing uh, uh, capability within this community. In very recent years, there's been a new uh, energy that has come together to say, you know what, let's realize this uh, with new opportunities. Let's give an opportunity to a young writer to create a new production that has never existed before. Uh, the lovely evenings on the, uh, uh, on the waterfront, the, uh, the wine in the Mississippi events that just started off kind of as a, a side thought and suddenly are becoming the place to be on the Mississippi River uh, on those evenings. It's really become quite uh, engaging. There's energy there. It's a group of people that have stepped up and said, let's see what we can do. Uh, and so often this community just gets together and gets things done. There is an attitude, an ability to create uh, the environment, to create opportunities in this community that I, I don't witness elsewhere. That's what makes, to me, that's what makes this community so special and so vibrant. Everywhere one looks in Itasca County, one will find grassroots efforts of people becoming leaders simply by raising their hand to address the needs of their community. The community spirit is literally growing today, thanks to the ongoing efforts of the Grand Rapids Farmers Market, where farmers and other entrepreneurs bring their products to market in a supportive, low-risk environment. We're really proud here at the Grand Rapids Farmers Market to be a business incubator, if you will. You're able to take an idea and, and tinker with it, try something new. 29 years ago, people got together and just decided there needed to be a, a place for the community to access fresh local food. You know, it wasn't a, we're gonna change the world kind of thing. It's, we've got something we wanna share with the community. Over at Itasca Community College, the faculty and staff have been stepping out to show the community how to nurture and celebrate students from a diverse range of cultures and backgrounds. Working to establish an American Indian Studies Center, support low-income students to thrive, and to attract first-generation college graduates while also educating police officers and the rest of the community to better relate to citizens of diverse backgrounds. They're all examples of just, you know, everyday faculty and staff on our campus saying there's, there's more that we can do. People are now coming up to Itasca to be a part of something. You know, not just athletically, but overall. You know, our faculty and staff, they've done a tremendous job of making the campus better in so many different ways. There are so many people that care. Uh, I'm, I'm proud to be a part of it. And I think that's one of the things that's great about Itasca Community College is really it's, it has a legacy of empowering folks when there's something that they're passionate about or they see a need and want to do something. We really have a strong legacy of finding ways to enable folks to do those things. And you look at all three of those areas, it was really people who really saw a need and were able to actually do something and, and we've seen the impact in our students. In Nashwalk, the community spirit is well and truly alive. Friends of the late Mary Ann Kumpala relate how they came to be involved in starting an endowment fund to help the projects that sustain the community. Marion had a way of being able to encourage us and, and implanted in us the 
initiatives to say this is something that we can all accomplish and by all of us participating, we could get it done. Little by little, donations have built up the endowment and have helped projects ranging from emergency services and parks to community halls and schools. New people that hadn't even considered being part of this are now involved in it and it's just kind of snowballed and it's all because of uh, Marion's inspiration and, and the driving force in it. The legacy which Charles Blandon left behind is multiplying in the Itasca County area as his foundation provided leadership and support for the starting of the Grand Rapids Area Community Foundation, a tool for those in the community who wish to give back without having to start their own organization or foundation. Our event, we started out with Myrna Lee Mania. We hope to change that into Mobility Mania. The funds that we collect, um, what we want to do is to be able to help businesses fix their doorways or fix if they have a ramp issue or if they have an accessibility issue. We become a nonprofit organization underneath the Grand Rapids Area Community Foundation so that the nonprofit um, organizations like our churches, small businesses, individuals can apply for help. How can we? put more local food on the, the tables of, of struggling families in, in the kind of Grand Rapids and Itasca area. Sarah Copeland at the Grand Rapids Area Community Foundation said this is exactly what Community Foundation is here for. We're here to take ideas and connect them to local people, local philanthropists that, that want to help. And so from that uh, phone call four or five years ago, we now have the most successful uh, SNAP and EBT program in greater Minnesota. Uh, Marion actually approached the Grand Rapids Area Community Foundation with her first uh, project, which was establishing a, a scholarship for the high school. The Grand Rapids Community Foundation was the best tool, the simplest to work with, and the greatest staff in any of these foundations that you could work with. Well, Grand Rapids Arts would not be able to function without the fiscal agency of the Grand Rapids Area Community Foundation, and that has allowed us to apply for grants. What better fiscal agent than a community foundation? They're able to do things that make life easier. We were able to merge our fund with that fund, and now you have 140 children in the orchestra that can get instruments mainly because of that foundation money. You have to lay a groundwork. You have to have the vision, but don't stop there. Don't do it alone. Uh, share your vision, share your dream. Um, talk about it. And there's other people out there that have the same concerns, but don't feel you have to do it alone because there are a lot of us dreamers out there and there's a lot of people that would help. Start small and let it grow.